Hi there. The first question was, how do I get 250 liters of manure into my biogas tank? So, I got myself a submersible pump like this. You can buy them in any hardware store. They are not so expensive. And they are submersible. That means you can put them straight into your liquid and we'll start pumping. And there you go. It empties one of these in no time. So when I had them in there, how did I get them into my tank? Well, for this, I got a piece of this polythene piping for drains and put my pipe here and that ends into the whole top hole of the digester and we started filling. These gray polypipe fittings are great. You get them in the hardware store. We get them at Bauhaus and they are from a company called Marley. To the left is a 50 mil, in the center a 75 mil, and here is a 50 mil joiner. To get your holes, you need a tool like this, which can house different gauges of saws. This is the one for the small hole, and here is the one for the larger hole. Now watch out, for a 50 mil hole, you need a 53 mil saw, and for the large hole, you need an 82 for the o-ring to fit perfectly. Here are the goodies that I've been using almost every day. Amongst them, the most important is this poly plastic pipe, 16 mils. It's great. You can see what's inside, either bubbles or water, and you can easily put it around these fittings here that are used for garden hoses. Garden hoses are also very good because they fit onto these fittings straight. If you have to enlarge them to get them over, use one of them. This is for a wine bottle to keep the wine fresh, but it's great to enlarge the hole of the pipe. To join two pipes, you can use these. They're also meant for joining garden hoses. And if you have to get into rubber boats to store your gas, get one of them. This side here is where the pipe fits. And this side here, you can get it into your fitting of the rubber boat, perhaps with another rubber ring or piece of pipe over it and it'll fit perfectly. But of course, last but not least, the most important are these great thingos here to get the, uh, the hoses tight. This I used a lot. It's a fitting that is used for boat building and on one side you can get the hose straight over it and on this side you can 
use it to as a fitting for filters and all sorts of things. Very handy. Don't forget the seals. Get them seals always so you have a, a soft, really good rubber seal to have it gas tight. And don't forget the silicone lubrificant to help get the, the pipes one into the other. And here, of course, to tighten your, your thingies, write them here. To tighten them, don't do it with a screwdriver, but do it with this gizmo here. Here I want to explain the stirring unit. To stir the slurry temporarily. You see it's a 75 mil pipe and on top you got another pipe inside which rotates slowly with a belt and that belt is driven with this cog. It is driven by an electric motor, little 12 volt motor, which is on a timer. Which sets it on and off. To build it, I just took a 75 mil. This is the pipe that goes all the way down into the tank as a seal around. I put a cap on top of it. I drilled a hole in the cap just the size of this 50 mil job here which then sits on top and inside the tank there is kind of a just a T where I joined another bar across so it was like a cross slowly turning in the slurry. To heat my tank I got two of these aquarium heaters from a German company This one's got 400 watts and I got another one with 200 watts. They have an electronic thermal control and keep my tank over 30 degrees. At night or when there is not much sun the solar panels won't produce enough power to heat my heating elements. So I have a switching box which gives me mains power whenever needed. This is my solar inverter for my two solar panels. And here is my iPad on which I can read how much power I've been using and how much there is at the moment being used. For temperature, I have this bot which gives me a day and night mini maxi reading which I can get off my iPhone so in the morning I can see how cold it was and how my heating is happening. Every now and then I do a pH meter reading. So I got this pH instrument and here I got it inside my 
slurry and I can get a reading for my records. Here is the pump with which I pump the gas up from the garden to my kitchen in the second floor. It is controlled via uh, a switch which I can operate electronically. And to see whether the pump is working, I got a lamp. So now I switch it on and you see the light goes on and I can see from the top that the pump is working. To drain the system from excess water which builds up, I got a hose which runs below the system into the garden and I can let the water go out. If you were wondering what I am cooking with, this is a simple Italian stove I had been using for years with a propane bottle. But here in the Venturi, I took simply this jet unit out and it works perfectly. Here is the control switch for the pump. If I turn it off, the gas will go off and I close the valve here. We have an apple tree in the orchard and when there is too many apples, they fall on the ground and we pick them up and feed them to the biodigester. But first, the apples have to get crushed in a hand crusher. So they are small enough that I can put them through my food mincer. Okay, I'm going to start the mincer now. And here is the water. And here's my apples. And I'm going to put in the apples. And I always put a bit of water in it. 